Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Rick Conti, and yes, I'm a retailer for Corvette, but equally enthusiastic about the car. And that comes to the ownership experiences, the journey to your purchases, things going on in the marketplace, and other things like we're gonna show you today, and that's how to change your oil. Let's face it, at the end of the day, are you guys gonna change your oil on your own? Probably not, but for the amount of business that we do out of state, and you're gonna go somewhere else and have the oil done, what we're gonna show you today is the proper procedure so there are things you look out for when you're having someone else change your oil. I'm sure you guys know what I mean. When you go to a dealership, you know, number one, you're worried about it. It's like, hey, do they know how? And I tell many of you, go up and quiz the service tech Say, hey, do you know how to change the oil on a dry sump system? And they say, huh? <laughs> you just need to say, have a nice day. I'll, I'll see you guys later. So uh, just to put you at ease, I'm hoping this video helps you guys. You know what, it'll boil down to little things too. You'd be surprised at how many things are missed. So we're gonna ask Chuck a couple of questions. Chuck Metz is our Corvette tech. He is equally excited about working on the car just like I am selling the car. This is our buddy Chuck. He loves working on these cars as much as I love selling them. Absolutely. Yeah, okay, that's the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, he does. He really does. You guys seen any of our earlier videos, you can check out some links down below in the description. You'll see how serious Chuck is about what he does. Hey, for those that don't know, this drains the tank. Okay. So most of your oil is going to come out of here. Now let me ask you something. Okay, uh -huh. we're doing a Z06 right now, so this is clearly a car that has the dry sump oil system. Correct. Like Grand Sport, so it has two drain plugs. Two. Okay, so the second one, what are you getting out of there? This one drains the pan. Okay. And that's why it does the dry sump system. Most of the oil is kept in the tank and it's fed in the motor as it's needed. Not much is kept in the pan. Okay, now if you got a Stingray, do you have two of these drain plugs? Uh, it depends. If it's a Z51, then yes. If not, a regular one, no. You only have one. You're on your game today, man. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me ask you this. Uh -huh. And I know you're extremely busy, so I appreciate taking the time to just kind of be underneath the car here and share this with the people on the channel. I mean, your schedule is just nuts, so being able to share this is fantastic. Here's so this guy, this guy drove in. Uh-huh. Okay, so are you concerned about the temperature of the oil? Uh, no, actually, I like it to be warmer. Okay. Because the warmer the oil, the more it comes out and the better it comes out. Okay, now if a guy's got the car sitting in his garage, say for a week, and he starts to tinker around underneath the hood and he opens up the hood and checks his oil when the car's cold in a dry sump system, is that a good idea? Well, you can, but you're not gonna get any oil on the stick. Right. Because the motor has to be at least 171 degrees. Fantastic. That's a very important part. Never put an oil filter on without lubing the seal. You want it to be wet. Because if you don't get make it wet, then it sucks to the engine and it's stuck there. So this helps it seal better and it just works better. As you can see, most of the oil come out of the front drain plug, which is coming out of these hoses, that comes out of the tank and the fender. We showed a little bit, but I mean, here's the other important part before you even start doing what you're doing now, uh -huh. and that's the proper lifting of the vehicle. Oh, absolutely. Especially cars like this that have the ground effects. Absolutely, you gotta be very careful. I have a special rack to do that with because of the ground effects. And the pucks make it so much more easier. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's the pucks that he's talking about. You can see it gives that little separation. Right here. Yeah, they right actually there. go up, uh, this is your frame. So yes. they go up in and turn and help keep it in there. So you can set the rack, and when you're done, you turn it and it comes right back out. Now, now that the majority of the oil's chain drained out, we're gonna put the drain plugs back in. This is something I have a hard time telling people. Don't over tighten drain plugs. No more than a wrench and a good and snug. It don't have to be crushed. You're going to put them up by hand and then you're just going to use a tool to tighten them up. Yep. No reason to use an impact wrench and go crazy. No, no use, reason to use an impact wrench. No reason to use a long ratchet with a socket on it. A wrench every time. <laughs> just a little snug up and you're done. Double check both of them. Don't want to over torque them. for an oil filter. <laughs> Same 
way with the oil filter. All we're going to do is hand tighten it. You don't have to put the oil filter wrench back on. Hand tight. Then I always like to take a rag, wrap around the oil filter, go up the side, and wipe all the excess off the filter that might have spread out when we was putting it on. That's good. You don't need to tighten it any more than that? Nope. Over tightening the oil filter, you'll squeeze the seal out and then you end up with a leak. Next thing we're going to do is check the tire pressure. I know they say these are supposed to be set at 30, but when the customer rolls in off the road, the tires are hot, they probably gain two pounds. So I at least like to see this is a 30.5. I'm going to set it up to 32.3. That way when he gets home and the car sets for a while, the tire light won't be on. Yeah, and just recently the temperature's been changing and the, it's been right. dropping a little bit. If I set him at 30 and he goes home and leaves it set overnight, comes out the next morning, boom, the tire light's on because now it's down to 27, 28 pounds. We don't want that. Well, I guess I can put a plug in here if we had a nitro machine that would alleviate a lot of those problems. <laughs> <laughs> so if you don't have nitro, then this is what we're talking about. Chuck and I have been extremely busy, but we have not forgotten yet our sit-down conversation about concerns and issues you've had with the car. We're, we're still going to do that, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I know your wife gave you a haircut and a shave and everything. And <laughs> you can see that's been a while. <laughs> yeah, right. It's all grown back. Okay. All right, Mrs. Metz. <laughs> now that we've changed, we've drained our oil, we've changed our filter, we've set the tire pressure, we're going to take flashlight and look it over front to rear, make sure everything's okay, intact, no leaks, everything's good. On the way back up, I'm just going to do a quick shake down of the suspension. Make sure everything's still nice and tight. Even though it's a brand new car, they could have hit something, ran over something, loosened something up. I want to make sure everything's all right. It's time to come down, put oh, some oil in. That means I need to get out, I need to get out from underneath the car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> For those without a dry sump, it's seven quarts. For those with a dry sump, it's 9.7. But I always put in about anywhere from nine to 9.5, and I can always add more. It's tougher to get it back out. Right. We've got to bring it up to temperature before we do our final check. Yeah, I've watched you do that several times. It's one of the reasons I wanted to share that with people on the channel, because you are meticulous, you do a great job on it, and uh, you really look out for the little things. Well, yeah, you have to. I mean, GM gives us a recommendation on how to check it, and if you're not following the procedure, then it's either too high, it's too low, it's not right. I don't know if you guys have seen them or not, but these quick fill funnels are great. Oh yeah, that's coming out of there nice and fast. Oh yeah, regular funnel, you wouldn't be able to do this. This screws right down into the top of the tank, just like the oil fill cap, and you can just keep pouring. I left some in the tank because I don't want to overfill it. Now before you check that, you're actually going to start the car and bring it back to temperature, is that correct? Absolutely. We're going to start it up and let the, I've got the instrument cluster set on oil temperature. That mm -hmm. way I can monitor it. You don't want it to be too cold. You don't want it to be too hot. Somewhere around 170, 171 degrees is when you want to shut it back off and check it. As you can see here, I've got the oil temperature gauge up on the cluster and I'm gonna watch it. Here's 200, right here. There's 175. So somewhere between the, the little mark and the big mark is where we're gonna wanna shut it down and check the oil. To help the temperature come up quicker, I'm gonna go ahead and just lay the hood down on it. That way it'll get hotter quicker. When it comes up to temperature, we'll be checking it, topping it off and everything will be all right. We're still waiting for the car to come to temperature, but Chuck and I talk about the Corvettes and the marketplace all the time. We've been talking about the C8 mid-engine car. You know what he's looking forward to? 
He was a four day class. <laughs> it jumps in. Exactly. He goes, hey, one of those classes you go and you drive and he goes, I know they're gonna do something for the for the C8 mid-engine car. He goes, I wanna go with you. And I think right. you should go. Absolutely. Because we learned a lot of stuff there. Sure. At those classes, and I remember back when Stingray was launched, we learned stuff at Spring Mountain that was never in any of my printed data. So they do a wonderful job with that. And I would love for you to experience Oh, it. I'd love to go. Absolutely. Absolutely. You sell them, I work on them. Sounds right. like we need to go. <laughs> Yet? Mm. Yeah, we're, we're just about there. We're about two notches below the 175, which would put us up around that 172, 173. So we should be good. But before I shut the car off, I'm going to put the customer stuff back where he had it on his driver information display. Oh, okay. They said that said anywhere no more than 10 minutes before you check it because then after 10 minutes, you're not going to get a correct, accurate reading. So usually, I, by the time I get my gloves back on and get over to the car, I'm ready to go. I remember one time I had a guy had a Z51 car, what we talked about earlier. It was a cold day, went out checking out the car, opened up the hood. Yeah. Ah, let me check the oil. Oh my goodness, this is low. Adds a bunch of oil next time he started the car. <laughs> yeah, it went <laughs> Just, everywhere. It went everywhere. Yep. So I already know this is low because I didn't put it all in. But we're going to see how low. Well, like you said, it's easier to add than it is to take it out. Right. We're about a little over a quart low, which is not bad. No problem. We didn't drive the car. We just let it idle to come up to temperature, so we didn't hurt anything. Now it's a matter of pouring and checking and pouring and checking until we get to where we need to be. Now we're about a quarter of a quart low, if that. And bingo, right on the money, right at the top of the hash bar. That's what we're looking for. Appreciate it, Chuck. Always fun hanging out with you, brother. No problem. Always fun to be here. We'll be back soon. You know that. Yes, we will. You guys have a good day. Well, gang, I hope you enjoyed today's vlog. I really enjoy sharing that kind of stuff with you. I'm really excited about the conversation we're about to have with you. It'll be a little similar to our friend Chuck at Corvette's 918 YouTube channel talking about C8 Corvette, about that car, about the marketplace, when it starts, and what's going to happen to C7. Will it be built alongside C8, or are they just going to cut ties and say, here we go, a new era of Corvette begins? So that conversation's coming up at our next vlog. I hope you have an opportunity to join us, me being a retailer and a huge fan, a huge enthusiast of this car. I want to give you a couple of a couple of different twists and of course a different perspective on what I think uh, is going on with the marketplace and where we're headed with Corvette. Now in this video, I don't want you to get confused on which Chuck I'm talking about. Real quick, just a thank you to Chuck from the Corvette's 918 YouTube channel. Uh, all of his cool comments, his kind comments towards me and the support is truly, truly incredible. It means a lot and I'm so excited. Saturday, September 22nd, I get an opportunity to meet him and shake his hand. Oh yeah, I'm driving his car too. Tell you what, gang, the channel continues to grow. A lot of new subscribers. If you haven't seen our last video, I mean, I love sharing too when you guys pick up the car. I mean, what amazing journeys. What a great time sharing your reward, your Corvette, the different stories, the different ways that you get here. Uh, I, I just, I love that and it's exciting. So if you get a chance, hit the videos tab right here on the Rick Corvette Conte YouTube channel. Check that video out. Uh, I, I think it'll make you smile and that's always my goal. Yeah, that's the goal, to make it fun, keep it informed. And if we entertain you along the way, that's pretty cool too. Tell you what, gang, I really appreciate the support of our growing channel, and I know a lot of you that watch a lot of YouTube, sometimes you're like, oh my gosh, I'm exhausted with the, hey, please thumbs up the video, please make a comment, please subscribe to the channel. You know why I ask you to do that? Because I take this serious. All right, cool. Thanks for the support, guys. I appreciate it. Look forward to seeing you on the next vlog and a great, crazy, a little bit of confusing conversation regarding C8 and C7.